pelvic girl rotations. Why we can consider motion from the perspective of the pelvis, the pelvis very unique. Um, at the elbow joint, right? And I know I didn't lecture on the elbow, but I think people kind of know what's going on with the elbow, right? So you have this articulation between these two bones, and you either have the ulna moving above the humerus or the humerus moving above the ulna. This bone right here is a separate articulation, separate joint. Joints that we kind of understand is this moving about this, this. The pelvis is unique. It's almost like if you took a traditional joint, separated it, and then put a bone in between, and that bone could do this, or that bone could do it. Like, like the pelvis is kind of like this block that can move between hip articulation or trunk articulation. It's just very unique in that way. In other words, I can spin the pelvis. I gave different analogies, but you know, you could spin the ball with the palm it on the top or the hands on the bottom. So it's very unique. I can spin the pelvis and it not have anything to do with the hips. I can make my pelvis look to the left and not be because of hips. I can make my pelvis look to the left because of my right hip. I can make my pelvis look to the left because of my left hip. I can make my pelvis look to the left because of both hips. I can make my pelvis look to the left in my trunk. So the pelvis is special like that, that you have a lot of different things that can make it spin. And it's a lot easier to talk about pelvic position from its perspective uh, than pelvic position because of hip and or trunk perspective. Okay? So again, what I'm not doing is I'm not disrespecting hip motion. I'm just saying we can talk about hip motion separately and we can talk about pelvic girdle separately. We can talk about trunk separately from different perspectives, okay? So in other words, when I say anterior pelvic girdle rotation, what I'm not saying is you didn't have hip flexion. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying from the hip joint proper's perspective, you had hip flexion. But from the block of the pelvis's perspective, the pelvis did a front roll. That's all. That's all I'm getting to. It's just a different perspective. We did anterior posterior on Monday. We did right and left lateral on Monday. And now we're going to get into right and left transverse. And then we're going to apply. We're going to look at some slow motion uh, movement things and talk about gait and walking and different tilts and stuff. So right and left transverse versus right and left lateral. These are locally referenced concepts, right? I mean, it's some locally referenced. So when I, when I say transverse, I don't mean the room's transverse plane. I'm talking about the pelvis's transverse plane. So how do we know what the pelvis's transverse plane is? We go to true anatomical position where everybody is lined up, everybody's seeing the same thing. So the pelvis's transverse plane is here. But if I lay down on the ground, the pelvis is transverse plane would still be here because it's from the pelvis's perspective of planes and axes, not the roots. Okay? Even if I were in this position, this is a very tricky question. I'm planting a seed that I'm going to ask you at the end of the class, but this trips up a lot of people because it's from the pelvis's perspective. When I do this, the pelvis is looking straight in the ground. This is still the pelvis's transverse plane. Okay? It's from the pelvis's perspective of spin. Okay? So right and left mean two different things in two different planes. Right and left means nothing in the sagittal. But right and left means something in the frontal and it means something in the transverse. You don't tell someone to a front roll to the right to the left. Right? I mean, locally, you could say right class, left class, but if you do a front roll, that's front. You can do a cartwheel to your right, you can do a cartwheel to your left, that's frontal plane. You can spin to the right, spin to your left, that's transverse plane. So for transverse pelvic girdle rotations, it's the same concept. Hey, pelvis, spin to your right. That's right transverse pelvic girdle rotation. Hey, pelvis, spin to your left. Left transverse pelvic girdle rotation. Why do we have that more work? Because it's pure spin, right? It's more pure rotation, kind of like internal and external of the knee, internal and external of the hip. We had that R word. We didn't have the R word for flexion, extension, and an adduction. We had the R word when there was more pure rotation. The pelvis, when the pelvis spins, there's the center of mass. Spin, spin, spin. Okay. So right and left transverse 
pelvic girdle rotation. This is different ways you can do it with illusions of the hip. Left transverse pelvic girdle rotation. The hip motion was right hip external rotation. Looked like it didn't move, but it did. The one that looked like it moved, but it didn't was my left hip, which did nothing. You had left hip nothing issue. Right hip external. Ouch. I've been up since 3.30, so I'm crazy right now. So, more like delirious. Right hip external. How would I have to rotate my hip to go back home? Wouldn't I have to internally rotate it to go back? So it had to externally rotate to go away. So that's motion from the perspective of my hip. It looks like the left hip did so, but it didn't. What would it look like if both feet were on the ground? Left transverse pelvic girl rotation, pelvis spinning to its left. Because of right hip internal rotation, wouldn't I have to externally rotate to line back up with my pelvis? And right hip external, left hip internal, right hip external. Right transverse pelvic girl rotation, perspective of my hips, right hip internal, left hip external. Let's look at slow motion of a batter and see what this might look like. Let's watch pelvic girl rotations. Again, I'm not disrespecting the hip, I just didn't ask you about it. <laughs> just asked you about the pelvis. Just because I didn't ask you about something doesn't mean that it didn't happen. We're just starting. What about right or left? Left. Good. Now let's talk about that hip. Here's what's really cool about baseball swing is that um, professionals, you know, as you get better and better and better, it's optimal to have, uh, think of it like this. Uh, figure skaters, you know the people that skate? They spin real fast, but they don't spin fast when they're spinning about two feet. What do they do? They get on one foot, right? And then <laughs> Sound effects. Same thing in baseball. If you're gonna have efficient swing, you wanna swing about one point. So what happens on batters right or left will put their lead leg, compress those two surfaces, uh, being their foot and ground and literally run an axis right through their body, through their front leg for optimal rotation. That back leg serves as a kickstand. You know what I mean by that? A motorcycle has a kickstand just to balance. So that back leg is just going along for the ride to prevent you from falling back, to keep you balanced for you to rotate on that lead leg. Okay? So the point is, is that it might look like for people who don't understand human motion, because they weren't taught human motion. The illusion is, is that back leg looks like it's rotating, but it's not. It's just going along for the ride. It's just a kickstand. The real motion is occurring in this lead leg. And I'm asking you, can you identify what type of motion in the hips transverse plane in that left leg, internal or external? <laughs> internal. The temptation is to say external, because of these global references that we have in our head. Meaning when my foot's off the ground, you're like external, external, external. Oh, this, anything that spins this way must be external. But when we put the foot in the ground and we spin the pelvis about the fixed leg, it's the opposite. The motion is the same, but our instinct of what we want to say is the opposite. So in other words, from here to there is the same as from here to there. Cap and bottom. Open, open. <laughs> We're going to get it open, right? So again, our instinct 
is to learn internal and external rotation with a foot off the ground. But that doesn't mean that anything that rotates that way is internal or external rotation. Okay? Again, start and finish position. Start, finish. I am internally rotating. How would I have to rotate to go back? I'd have to externally rotate to go back. Therefore, I'm internally rotating. Okay? Let's look at a few more. Kickstand. Once you, let's see, Harper's a lefty. So when you have internal rotation and you get to the end of your range of motion, it's natural that it's going to eventually want to go back home. So that external rotation happens to basically get his leg back. Because if you, in other words, if you stretch something and it gets too tight, eventually it's going to work. No, I'm sorry. So when he's rotating, eventually those muscles are going to be at the end of their range of motion. The joint's going to be at the end of the range of motion. Since he wants to go to first base, he's not going to go back like this. <laughs> it's easier once he creates the, the contact for him to now take the pressure off of his foot and just do that and go back and start running the first base. Okay? So that's why you see the internal rotation followed by the external rotation. You, you can't have full range of motion on internal and then keep internal. <laughs> you gotta go back. I mean, that's how a human motion works. You gotta flex, eventually you gotta extend. So if you internally rotate, eventually you gotta external rotate. So that's what that's about. Viat squat, viat tomato. Oh, this person loves some of this Let's look at a different view. Ooh, my mints. Captain David Wright. Right or left, transverse. Boom! What you think? Left transverse, yeah. Spinning to the left. Cool. All right. Now, this is baseball, so what? Um, so what is, human movement is universal, um, whether you enjoy baseball or not, football, soccer, hockey, uh, if you've never watched the sport in your life, it doesn't matter. So in other words, if someone asks me questions about analyzing position or motion in ice hockey, I know two things about ice hockey, jack and track. I don't know anything about ice hockey, but I know about the human body. So I can still look at people and, and look at position and motion. So in other words, your background level of knowledge in these things is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It's about understanding the human body and understanding changes in position and motion. Okay? So don't ever, well, I don't really know about gymnastics, and he keeps asking me gymnastics questions. I'm not asking you questions about coaching it. I'm not asking you questions about scoring it. I'm just asking you questions about people moving within. Okay? So, um, in terms of walking and gait, I want to mention about pelvic barrel rotations that we can commonly see. The pelvis rotates to help reposition our feet. But similar to how our scapula can help reposition our hands, Right? To help us get a little bit higher, a little bit of lecture on that later. Just, you know, we have pressure. The pelvis, although it can't do it independently, can help reposition our feet. What I mean by that is that if I'm going to stride, kick through and take a step forward, transverse pelvic vertebral rotation actually helps get my foot out a little bit further for me to have a little bit of increase in my stride. So in other words, my pelvis does In addition, my pelvis also kind of rotates in the frontal plane. Some people more than others, maybe this weekend uh, or, or Monday or Tuesday at Mardi Gras, you may see more, more pelvic lateral than others, I don't judge. But, but when it looks like somebody's throwing out their hips, that's just the pelvis doing It's just the pelvis rotating about the hips. Okay? 
Now, we do it subtly. We don't go that extreme, but most humans do it subtly because when we go to swing our leg through, we need to make sure we don't catch it on the floor. So what we typically do is we will hike our swing leg through so that we can get it through without falling down. Well, guess what? Hiking your hip up is pelvic rotation. So if I'm weight bearing on my left and I hike my right up just a little bit to make it easier for me to swing through, I had left lateral pelvic girl rotation. And then when I'm on my right side and I hike my left side up a little bit to swing through, I had right lateral. So it's just constant fluctuations of laterals and transverses. Now, it's hard to see because when they're happening at the same time, it's like a, <laughs> kind of like a little wobble going on. But the point is, is that you have different spins in different planes for different functions. Transverse plane is to help you get a little bit more of your step. Frontal plane is to kind of help make sure your leg can swing through without catching it on the floor. Okay? That's pretty cool. Pelvic girdle rotations. So, in review, this is anterior because of hip flexion, bilateral hip flexion specific. This is posterior because of bilateral hip extension. And what about this? What about pelvic girdle first? How did the pelvis spin? Right lateral. And remember, I'm teaching you to learn it two different ways. Maybe one works better for you. How would it roll? Or how is it pouring <laughs> the water out the side? So in other words, when I start here and I do this, you can imagine water pouring out the right side of my pillow. Right lateral. Okay? So right lateral because of left hip add, right hip add. Left lateral because of left hip ab, right hip ab. Remember, it doesn't have to be two, I can have one leg. Right lateral because of right hip ab. And yeah, my left hip did some, but it didn't have to. In other words, what actually spun my pelvis was the leg that was on the ground. Because my left leg could do whatever it wants. My pelvis doesn't have to pour more or spin more. It's only until I move the leg that's anchored. Okay. What about this? Double girl rotation. Right transverse. Hip motion. Right or left? Left. What did the left hip do to spin the pelvis? It externally rotated. The right transverse pelvic girl rotation was because of my left hip external rotation. You see how that verbiage works? The basketball spun because of both of my hands below it. The basketball spun because of just one of my hands below it. And eventually when I lecture about the trunk, we're going to talk about how we can spin the basketball with the hand above. Okay. Are you all ready for some harder kind of questions, or do we still need to practice some three foot parts? Okay. What would, hmm. let's see if y'all are ready for this. I think y'all are. External, internal, 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 external, internal. Meaning that there is an illusion with hip rotation if you follow a segment such as the foot. And the reason is because the knees, upper extremity relative is the elbows. Elbows, when they flex from anatomical hands, go forward. When knees flex or anatomical feet go back. And although you're like, duh, it does create a potential illusion. When I internally and externally rotate my shoulder, hand follows the rotation. However, 
for the hip, when I flex my knee, it doesn't follow the rotation. See what I'm getting to? So if you say, oh, I'm just going to follow the foot, wherever the foot goes, that's where the hip goes. As soon as I bend or flex my knee and I do this, your instinct wants to say internal rotation because you see the foot coming in. But the reality is, is that if I planted a flag, remember Talladega Nights? When Ricky Bob stabbed himself in the fork. Ricky Bob! <coughs> external, internal, external, internal, external, internal. See what I'm saying? Okay. So when you cross one leg over the other, that's actually external rotation of the hip. Okay? I preface that for the next question that I'm about to give you that I'd like for you to discuss amongst yourselves. There is no law that says pelvic girl rotations have to be when you're standing up normally. You could have pelvic girl rotations in any position. I could rotate my pelvis in its frontal plane. I could rotate the pelvis in its transverse plane. I could rotate my pelvis in its sagittal plane. Because pelvic girl rotation is all about the pelvis. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do together, if I'm in this position, here's my pelvis. Left lateral, good. Right lateral, we're good. Left transverse, we're good. Right transverse, we're good. Okay. So my question to you to try to figure out is hip perspective. If I'm on my left knee, uh, let me get on my right knee. If I'm on my right knee and I do this, the same thing's happening in my right hip as when I was standing, but not my left hip, because now my hip is in a new position, okay? So here, in terms of the way my hip is and the pelvis, we're looking at lateral pelvic girl rotation being very similar to this kind of motion. This was internal and external rotation of the hip. So now my pelvic girl rotation is gonna be because of left hip internal or external. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. I want you to try to figure it out. When I was here, it was all about ab and ab. But when I am here, this motion is in the same plane as frontal motion. See what I'm trying to get to? Internal and external rotation of the hip happens to be in the same frontal plane as the pelvis's perspective. Okay? So the question is, I'm bending, I'm on my right knee. I have right lateral pelvic girl rotation. I go from here to there. I know that my right hip abducted. What I'm trying to see if you can figure out is how did my left hip rotate? I started here and I did this. Discuss amongst yourselves.
or something else I want to teach you today. So what I'm going to do is, as cryptic as I am, I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to just keep giving you clues to see if, like, it either confirms or changes your answer, okay? So in terms of position, my left hip is flexed, right? But it is neither internally nor externally rotated. It's just flexed. So from the perspective of my femur about my hip, I haven't spun any in the femur's transverse plane. In other words, I haven't done any of this yet. It's still in kind of anatomical position from that femur's transverse plane perspective. Now I go from here to there. perspective as a local reference, in other words, wherever my eyes go, where the pelvis has eyes, if the pelvis does this, if the pelvis tilts his right ear to his right shoulder, and the pelvis says, oh wait, my hip is not in anatomical position in the transverse plane anymore. How would my hip have to rotate to go back to where it started? It would have to internally rotate to go back. <coughs> So therefore, it had to externally rotate as I rotated the pelvis. That is not easy, ladies and gentlemen. But it is what's going to separate you guys from other people who are not clinically trained in human motion. And sometimes I use these examples not to scare you, not to intimidate you, but to be like, whoa, human motion is a lot more than just this <laughs> and that. It's a lot of illusions involved. Okay. Next thing. There is a variation of ab and abduction that I need to teach you. A variation. So it's the same concept, but because it can look different, uh, we call it a variation. I'll get to what I'm talking about. Um, I taught you in anatomical position. We have away from six, towards six, at, at. But what if I took, what if I could take the clock and rotate the clock, the whole clock on the table. The clock hand can still go away at towards six. And because we have different muscles, some of them the same, but some different, that might be moving the clock hand differently when the clock is laying down versus the clock hand upright, we have a different variation of away and towards six o'clock that we call horizontal, horizontal ab and abduction. Okay? It's the same concept, just on a different road. You cannot get to I-20, you know how I-20 I think runs through Shreveport? You can't travel east and west on I-20 unless you move away from I-10, right? That's kind of the deal. You're not on I-20 here. You have to go up in order to travel east and west on this new road. So you, you, you can't even do that variation in anatomical position. You have to move and then say, I move my clock hand away. But now I can get my clock hand back in two different directions. I can turn around and go back the same way, or I can get my clock hand back to six when <laughs> traveling this way. Because if you think about it, your clock hand is back at six because extension didn't get you any further away from six o'clock. So I can go away in my trunk's frontal plane, and then I can come towards in my trunk's transverse plane. It's a variation of avid abduction that we call horizontal, horizontal, Ad and abduction. Okay. Now, why is that important? Well, more for the shoulders, but for the hips, you can do variations of ad and abduction in the pelvis's transverse plane, right? So, if you were doing like the, uh, the little thigh master, little squeezy exercises, you'd have horizontal abduction, horizontal abduction, horizontal ad, horizontal ad. All that means is that I went towards in six o'clock, 
But my clock, <laughs> my clock was here. So the pelvis is transverse plane versus the pelvis is frontal plane. Okay. So, what would right hip horizontal abduction look like? God, I have no flexibility. Okay. So, if you hear a loud pop. That was knee muscles. Right hip, oh God. Right hip, this is so embarrassing. Right hip horizontal abduction would be this, away from six. Right hip horizontal added abduction would be that. Okay. This would be regular, sorry, regular. Frontal plane, ab, ab, away towards, away towards. Transverse plane of the pelvis would look like this. Think about it, it's the same thing. The leg is doing the same thing. It's just in a different perspective from the socket, a different perspective from the pelvis. But the femur itself in the leg is doing the exact same thing. How do I know it's doing the same thing? Because I can make it do the same thing. Like I could be here, and do <laughs> my ab and abduct. Right? Here's the trick question. It's the last trick question I'm going to give you. And you know, it's not even that tricky if you listen to it or not. If this is right hip ab and this is right hip ab, what would this be? From the perspective of the pelvic girdle rotation, and the perspective of the hip that was responsible for the pelvic rotation. I'll do it in different positions so that everybody can see. I start here and I do this. And I'm asking you two things. Pelvic rotation and hip motion responsible for spinning that pelvis. Go. And if you already have an answer, I encourage you to write down some feedback questions or some clarification questions on any material. You'll turn that in, and those are the things I'm going to lead off with on my lecture. And anything outside of the usual time, I'll just move on to uh, the shoulders. Y'all know what left T P G R is? Uh -huh. Okay, what if I did something like
Those are your options. Don't answer it right away. You want me to do it again? Sure. Let me know if this view. Um, Who's pretty confident? All right, good. good. On a confidence scale of one to 10, where 10 is um, the New Orleans Saints versus the Delcom Panthers, and a zero is the New Orleans Saints in the playoffs? Oh, I'm, Drew Brees is coming back. Everybody should be happy. We're like the first team ever to lose like three straight playoff games by the last four. What you think? We got two. We got some people doing the get with, with two. Okay. Anybody have something different than two? Anybody have any differential diagnoses? All right. The answer was five. Answer was five. And listen, I tried to plant these seeds. I tried to plant these seeds. I tried to do that. From my hips perspective, here to there is the exact same as from here to there. That was right hip horizontal abduction. Internal and external rotation would look like this. Watch. Do we agree? External, internal. So when my foot's on the ground, I would look like a helicopter if I was <laughs> internally and externally rotating my hip. That makes sense? So again, here's the lesson. As a teacher, as I'm just a, a lowly teacher who doesn't have the patience for minors, here's the lesson. Don't assume. Don't assume, because it is so easy to say pelvis spun in its transverse plane, so the hip must have spun in its transverse plane. It's just so easy to assume human motion. And the trickle-down effect is it's easy to assume muscles. Therefore, it can be easy to assume exercises. It can be easy to assume treatment. It can be easy to assume, in all the different areas that we're going to branch off to, it's easy to assume. Okay? Y'all don't hate me, right? Isn't it better to miss it now than on the test? Because you're going to see it on the test. Yeah. Alright, we're good? Alright, turn in your feedback sheets if you have some stuff you want to clarify. And you guys have a 